Going on a quest On a stat quest Stat quest Hello, and welcome to Stat Quest. Today we're going to be talking about hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering is often associated with heat maps. If you're not already familiar with what heat maps are, just know that the columns typically represent different samples and that the rows typically represent measurements from different genes. Red typically signifies high expression of a gene and blue or purple means lower expression for a gene. Hierarchical clustering orders the rows and or the columns based on similarity. This makes it easy to see correlations in the data. For example, these samples express the same genes, and these genes behave the same. On the left, we have a heat map without hierarchical clustering, and on the right, we have a heat map with hierarchical clustering. So you can see that the clustering makes a big difference on how the data is presented. Heat maps often come with dendrograms. So we'll talk about those too. Let's get started. We'll start with a simple example. Here we've got a simple heat map that has three samples and four genes. For this example, we are just going to cluster or reorder the rows or the genes. Conceptually, the first step is to figure out which gene is most similar to gene number one. Genes number one and two are different. We can tell because the colors are very different. Gene one is highly expressed in sample number one, so it has a red color. Gene two, however, is not highly expressed in sample number one, so it has a blue color. In sample number three, Gene 1 is lowly expressed, so it's blue, and gene 2 is highly expressed, so it's red. Genes 1 and 3 are similar, so that means in sample 1, both gene 1 and 3 are red, they're highly expressed, and in sample 3, they're both blue, meaning they're lowly expressed. Genes 1 and 4 are also similar. However, gene number one is most similar to gene number three. So the second step is to figure out what gene is most similar to gene number two. So we do all the comparisons and we see that gene number two is most similar to gene number four. And then we do the same thing for gene number three and then gene number four. In step number three, we look at the different combinations and figure out which two genes are the most similar. Once we've done that, we merge them into a cluster. In this case, genes number one and three are more similar than any other combination of genes. So genes one and three are now cluster number one. Step four, go back to step one, but now treat the new cluster like it's a single gene. So in step one, we figure out which gene is most similar to cluster number one. Cluster number one is most similar to gene number four. And we figure out which gene is most similar to gene number two. In this case, gene number two is most similar to gene number four. But notice that we compared gene number two to cluster number one. And then we do the same thing for gene number four. Of the different combinations, figure out which two genes are the most similar. Now merge them into a cluster. In this case, genes two and four are the most similar combination. So we've merged them into a cluster. Now we go back to step one. However, since all we have left are two clusters, we merge them. Bam! We're all done. Hierarchical clustering is usually accompanied by a dendrogram. It indicates both the similarity and the order that the clusters were formed. Cluster number one was formed first 
and is most similar. It has the shortest branch. Cluster number two was second and is the second most similar. It has the second shortest branch. Cluster number three, which contains all of the genes, was formed last. It has the longest branch. Now let's go over a few nitpicky details. Remember the first step? Figure out which gene is most similar to gene number one? Well, we have to define what most similar means. The method for determining similarity is arbitrarily chosen. However, the Euclidean distance between genes is used a lot. Let's look at an example. We'll use a very simple heat map that just has two samples and two genes. Now we're displaying the values that underlie the colors that we have in the heat map. The Euclidean distance between genes 1 and 2 is just the square root of the difference in sample number 1 squared plus the difference in sample number 2 squared. Here we'll just plug in the values for sample number 1. We have 1 1.6 minus negative 0.5. Now let's plug in the values to calculate the difference in sample number 2. We have 0 0.5 minus negative 1.9. Doing the subtraction gives us the square root of 2.1 squared plus 2.4 squared. We can think of these values within the parentheses as sides on a triangle. So on the x-axis, we have the distance between gene 1 and gene 2 in sample number 1. And on the y-axis, we have the distance between gene 1 and 2 in sample number 2. The hypotenuse is the distance between genes 1 and 2. The Pythagorean theorem says that the hypotenuse equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. In this case, that means the square root of 2.1 squared plus 2.4 squared. And that gives us 3.2 the distance between gene number 1 and gene number 2. When we have more samples, we just extend the equation. It's no big deal. The Euclidean distance is just one method. There are lots more, including the Manhattan distance. The Manhattan distance is just the absolute value of the differences. So instead of squaring the differences and then taking the square root, all we do is take the absolute value of the differences. We can think of the Manhattan distance in geometric terms by imagining that each difference is a line segment. If we take all those line segments and put them together, head to tail, head to tail, and then add that total length of all those line segments together, that's the Manhattan distance. Yes, it makes a difference. Wah, wah. Here's a heat map drawn using the Euclidean distance. And here's the same information drawn as a heat map, but now we're using the Manhattan distance. The heat maps are very similar, but there are also a few differences. The choice and distance metric is arbitrary. Wah, wah. There is no biological or physical reason to choose one and not the other. Pick the one that gives you more insight into your data. Now, do you remember how we merged genes 1 and 3 into cluster number 1 and compared it to other genes? Well, there are different ways to compare clusters, too. One simple idea is to use the average of the measurements from each sample. But there are lots more. And these have effect on clustering as well. So let's talk about the different ways to compare clusters. For the sake of visualizing how the different methods work, imagine our data was spread out on an xy plane. Now imagine that we have already formed these two clusters, and we just want to figure out which cluster this last point belongs to. We can compare that point to the average of each cluster. This is called the centroid. The closest point in each cluster, this is called single linkage or we can compare it to the furthest point in each cluster. This is called complete linkage.
and there are other methods as well. Here's a heat map that compares the furthest points in the clusters. By the way, if you use R, this is the default setting for the HCLUST function. This heat map compares the average points in the clusters, and this last heat map compares the closest points in the clusters. These heat maps are all very similar, but there are also differences in the way the data is presented. In summary, clusters are formed based on some notion of similarity. You have to decide what that is. However, most programs have reasonable defaults. Once you have a subcluster, you have to decide how it should be compared to other rows, columns, or subclusters, etc. And most programs have good default settings for this as well. And the height of the branches in the dendrogram shows you what is most similar. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you liked this presentation, please subscribe to my channel and you'll get more like it. Also, if you'd like me to do something specific, feel free to mention it in the comments below.